What's going on, everybody? It's Brian Tripp. Welcome to another episode of the REI Live podcast. We are real estate investing live. We interview the very best real estate investors, entrepreneurs, and business leaders all throughout the country. And today, I am, I'm excited. We have an incredible guest. We're going to be talking about contractors, my least favorite subject in the entire world. But my guest, Ryan Garcilazzo, he is going to make this a fun subject and topic for all of us. How's it going today, Ryan? Going well, brother. How you doing? I'm doing well. I want to just jump right in and talk and just unleash the elephant in the room. Everyone I know, Ryan, hates dealing with contractors. Everybody does. So I want you to give, give the people listening just a little snippet. Why do you, because we're going to get to this way later on the show in more depth. I want you to just give them a little teaser now, and then I want to kind of get your story a little bit, how you got to where you are today and, and sure. what you're doing today. But give people a little teaser. I want to know why do you think most house flippers, entrepreneurs, real estate guys, why do they hate contractors? Because you just said it right there. They're an entrepreneur. They're not a contractor. They're an investor. They're not a contractor. They're a house flipper, but they didn't learn contracting. It's very, very simple. You want a snippet? Here's a snippet. You're going to learn how to invest in real estate. You're going to learn from an investor. You want to learn how to flip a house? You learn from a contractor. There's your answer. That's why you hate contractors because we know the game and you don't. You hire us to provide a service that you cannot perform yourself. You also hire us to perform a service that has numbers and budgets attached that you cannot perform yourself. But yet you hate us because you don't know what we do. And savvy guys like us know that. And what do we do? We take advantage of you. And that's why I decided to stop doing that and showing you guys the game. I love this because I've got like 10 rebuttal questions, everything you just said, and we are going to dig yeah, into buddy. that deep. But first, before we do all that, I just want to give everybody a little teaser of what we're going to be talking about. Ryan, tell everybody who you are. How'd you get in the business? What are you doing specifically today? Sure. So I've been in the game 15 years. I started when I was 22. I just turned 38. A lot of things we've done is we started off as contractors for about the first decade. Right, the first 10 years of my tenure. And we flipped about a thousand properties uh, on behalf of investors and hedge funds and equity firms and, and what have you, home investors, fortune builders, we've ugly houses, the whole damn night. Right. And the one thing that was consistent was I'm always making money and you're not because I know how to make money and you don't. Everything looks good when you do the acquisition on paper until you get to construction where everything's lost. Everybody who's listening to this right now is going, yeah, keep going. The reality is very simple. And I teach this daily. You are an investor. You must, 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 must participate at some level in your flip. Whether you like to or not, you have decided by, by, as a byproduct to become a property manager and a project manager. And if you don't know how to do all that, do not flip a house until you do. Because guys like me will take your money. I used to tell people all the time, I had like a 98% close rate when I was a contractor and I'd come out to an investor's property. I'd look you dead in your eyes and I'd smile. You have no idea what I, what I know, which means I own you. So if you sign a contract with me, you're going to be excited because my reputation was that I can get it done and it gets done very well. But everybody else would be like, Roddy gets money. He gets paid. And I don't know how, but I always feel like I'm getting ripped off. The reason why you felt that is because I knew my numbers and you didn't. So when you feel inferior, yeah, somebody, it's like losing a boxing match. Oh, he, he was taking steroids or, oh, you know, he's cheating. It's like, no, not really. You just didn't prepare. And, and that's really what it was in a nutshell. So for 10 years, we dominated Chicago. We won all the awards in the world mm. in our industry. And what, what a change was, is I, in my late 20s, I started thinking, how can I help investors? But I was scared myself because, to be honest with you, people ask me this all the time. I was just at an event that we won an award for the Big 50 as a top 50 contractor in the country out of 60,000 for the second time. And one of my contractors, it's a peer of mine who does like $30 million in, in, in uh, revenue as a contractor. He's like, he's like, when did you feel you were ready to teach? And I said, dude, I said, after 300 flips, I thought I might know what I'm doing. I said, after like six, 700 flips, I thought maybe I could teach somebody else. And why that, that's profound because you know how many people are out there trying to claim guru after three flips? You see no it doubt. everywhere. I'm like, dude, you have no idea. You don't get in the ring and box loudly because you've got gloves or you think you sparred once. You, you can't do that. And I'm being completely honest because I'm a type A animal. I didn't feel com comfortable until I did several hundred where I thought maybe, just maybe, I can reach somebody and change the way they rehab. And then we went after. And, and that's when I made the switch. And what really was the trigger, the, the, the turning point for me was when my wife told me she was pregnant. And I said, okay, now now's the time for this transition. Our business solidified, reputations there, branding, the whole nine. I said, this would be a great transition. 
And then I found out we're having twins. I'm like, oh, wow. Because I said, now's the time to do good business. It's not about doing awesome business in one, you know, one, uh, one, one viewpoint would be money, financial, profitability. Yes, that's important. And I didn't care too much about the investor. I'm honest, man. You ask anybody, I'd say how it is. But once I started telling, you know, once my wife said, oh, we're having twins and all these things, I'm like, all right, my heart started changing. I said, I've got to change the way I do business. I think I'll find longer longevity. And I think there is an opportunity there because that, remember, like I said, the investor contractor gap, that's missing. If somebody can bridge that gap that's got the credibility from both worlds, that's a huge difference. So I went after it, man, and it's been five years, and it's crazy. It's what it is. It's very organic. So we're, I've definitely got some follow-up questions when it comes to that, everything sure. you're talking about. But, but I want to – so what are you doing specifically today? You're doing – you have the education piece. That's the main part of your business right. today, or do you have right. – tell, tell me about all well, made, everything you're going made but The bread and butter with the Rehab Depot now is the Roddy Rehab Academy. And we have online classes. We have 50 live Zoom calls a year, every Tuesday night, hosted by me. I train right here on this wall behind me. And the same thing is we also do about five to six boot camps a year, which are two and a half day boot camps based on rehab project management, which is the key. So we have investors who come to learn that. We also have investing companies that'll send their project managers to learn the systems of rehab project management. And then we offer corporate consulting in which we will go to a specific office um, and continue the education both here from the office, but also in person on the field with them, training their people. And again, teaching the investors how to switch the model from investment model to construction model. Because when you're doing volume, how do you control that volume? It's no longer an investment model. You have to go, that, this, all these properties go over to construction now. Well, who's running it? And that's what we teach. So we are a consulting and training firm all the way around, both online and in person. And Ryan, it's really interesting to me because what everything you're saying right now is speaking to me and it's probably speaking to a lot of investors out there who have ever flipped a house or are currently flipping or are in our area, we do a lot of turnkey flips. And I know that that's really kind of popular where you are, at least in the Northwest Indiana area, kind of around where you guys are. So, so there's rehabbing going on and you're kind of speaking my language right now, but you made me kind of perk up a little bit when you say something like, if you want to learn investing, go to an investor. You want to learn how to flip a house, you go to a contractor. Now to that, I might say, someone might say, well, these contractors, and you mentioned it, you're kind of ripping people off anyway. So sure. I want to teach the contractor how the game's played, not the reverse. Understood. And that's the whole idea. We're giving the game back to investors so that the investor has the, the ability to level the playing field from day one. So talk about that more. Like, what are you doing specifically? Sure. So one of the biggest things we teach is called the production phase. And I'm going to give this free education right now to all you guys. The production phase is a legit phase of construction that prepares you for demo day one or groundbreaking day one. It doesn't matter if it's new construction, rehabbing, building bridges. It's all the same. You have to prepare. What happens all the time? Think about yourself, right? How many times have you actually prepared for demo day one? Probably not much. And if you did, you didn't really know what you were doing. There is a legit process to separate when you drive past all these, everywhere you go, every state of your city, the streets are under construction and buildings are being built or whatever, and you see like a fence that has all these documents in it, right? Where you see a board that has papers on it. What is that? That's job site info. It's contractual documentation, permits, everything that goes along with that job from that specific municipality. Why aren't investors doing the same shit? Blows my mind, right? So there's four steps to production. One, is, is week one, step one. And that's pre-walking the property with the preliminary scope of work with your GCs of choice, three GCs. During that walk, you need to get three verbal commitments before you can even do step two, three, and four. You need to get a start date, a time frame, and a budget, all agreed to at pre-walk. People can't do that. You Hold on real quick. You said three different GCs? I would walk a property with three separate GCs, not at the same time. Okay, got it. All right. So let's, let's role play. Roddy's your GC. I come walk in. I've got a scope of work. We do something, right? We walk the property. You tell me your vision. Oh, I want to knock this wall down. I want to open for a concert. I want to put some cans in, blah, 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 blah. All the same things everybody wants. And, and what do you want from me? As a contractor, you'd like me to engage you with ideas, suggestions, yeses and nos. Not, oh, yeah, I've been there. I've done that before. Oh, sure, that could be done. Oh, yeah, no problem. Oh, that's easy. If you hear a lot of that walk away, that's not your contractor because you're looking for a teammate. You're looking for a partner. 
you're going to date this fool for a while, right? So you better get to know him. So you, got, you want some feedback. Like if we knock this wall down, I'd like to hear, no, it's a load-bearing wall. We've got to, might, we might have to put a beam. Okay, well, that tells me we might have to change the budget. Maybe I don't have the budget for that. So I'm going back and forth. That's what you want from me, Brian. You want to go back and forth. So things sound good. You feel good about me. We're walking to the front of the house. Now the three verbal commitments you need to get. You are going to tell me when I'm going to start. You are going to tell me how long the project's going to take, and you are going to tell me the suggested budget. That's mind-blowing. Because people are probably driving right now, and you're probably sitting there going, well, how does that go down? Well, because we teach you the empowerment. You must know what I know, contractor-wise. So if it's $1,000 a day is a basic way to look at time frames. So if it's a $50,000 budget, you're looking at about 50 days. Hmm. So literally, you can look at a calendar and go, okay, start date, blah, blah, blah. Right? I would add a two-week buffer if there's permits involved, right? Because inspection periods and all that. But I do not include the time period from applying for permits to a par- permit approval. It actually starts the day you're able to put that permit in the window. Now your time 50 days goes, plus a two-week buffer. So you already know how long the project's going to take based on your number, your budget, right? Here's another thing. You're going to need to tell me my start time frame. So if you have a property that you put under contract and either one of two things happens, one, you know when it's going to close, or two, you're confident you know when it's going to close, then that's my start week. Why should I tell you when I'm starting? Never ask me an open-ended question because you're going to get an answer you're not going to like. Right? How long does it take you? Never ask. When can you start? Never ask. So here's how we do that. The three verbal commitments. Okay, Roddy, we had a good walk, blah, blah. Any other questions? No, Brian, good. No questions here. All right, cool. So here's the deal. Uh, I put this property under contract. Let's just say it's today, 930. September 30th. I close on it October 30th. I need to make sure you can start the week of October 30th. Is that a problem? That's much different than when can you start? Because now I'm processing numbers. I'm thinking October 30th, that's a full month out. I've got this project. This should be coming to an end. Yes, that should not be a problem. I've got four weeks to plan. That's verbal commitment number one in the bank, right? Now you're going to tell me how long the project's going to take, right? Okay, so what did we talk about earlier? $50,000 budget, about 50 days. So you're going to sit there and say, okay, cool. Well, here's the deal, man. That's almost two months. But if you're going to give me the two-week buffer, then it is two months. So you say, look here, Rod. Here's the deal, man. I need this project done in about yeah, no more than two months. It's got to be done in under two months. Is that a problem? So I'm sitting there going, okay, counting on my weeks. No, actually, that shouldn't be a problem. I might have to use that two weeks. I might even suggest a buffer. If I suggest a buffer, maybe you should listen to me. How many guys actually do that? Not many contractors. Most people are like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I can do it. But the reality is if I said, well, let me think about it. Two months, uh, I might run into an inspection issue. I wouldn't mind an extra week. You know what? You know what, Roddy? I'll give you that extra week. Not a problem. Now we're going back and forth, but you told me how long the project's going to take. You didn't ask me how many weeks or months do you need? Because I'll say 14 weeks. And you're going to be like, what? And I know there's a lot of investors right now listening saying, I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. They give me some crazy outlandish time frame that doesn't make sense to me. Well, now you're in control again. And here's the big one. Here's the big one. Verbal commitment number three is awarding the budget. I tell and I teach all day long about how to control numbers. If you can reverse engineer the GC fee, that'll change your life forever in the way you rehab, simply by controlling the numbers before I even sign a document. How does that work? If your budget is 50,000 all in, there's always a 10% contingency of that 50, which really takes us down to $45,000 budget, because you're not giving me the 5% or 5,000, why should you? It's your money. A lot of investors make that mistake. They don't, they don't put that aside. Half of all budgets are usually 50% labor. So if you know that, we're going back down to 25,000 immediately, right? Because I want you to control the materials. I'm a contractor. I can't financially manage myself that well. I'm not really good with managing my team. Half my team I just met a month ago because I keep having turnover myself, right? So I, I, don't, I don't have the time and the luxury to go back and forth to the stores, but Here's the deal, Brian. I could do it if you want me to, but guess what? Behind the scenes, I'm marking every single lineup. Okay. The whole idea of this model is for you to control every single penny it coming right. under budget. Right? This is how we do it. Now you know. So you cut the budget in half from 45. Half of that's whatever, 22.5. Now 22.5, you multiply it by three numbers. This is gonna mind blow everybody who's not writing this down. You take 22.5 and you multiply it by 25%, then you multiply it by 20%. And then you multiply it by 15%. What do you think the 25, 20, and 15 is? Potential GC fee markup that you're trying to eliminate. 
So if you multiply 22.5 by 20%, what is that? Uh, about five grand. Okay, so try right. five grand from 22.5 then. That's where you're gonna make my offer on labor. Mm. Like, right, I need you to do labor. My budget on that is only 17,000. You control the entire rest of the budget up to 50 grand. Mm. You are now in control. So all we're doing now is finagling. So I had you do it three times. So you have three different negotiation taxes. You're not standing there going, uh, you're trying to figure me out. So basically if I can't do it at 15 and I can't do it at 20 and I can't do it at 25, I'm too expensive for you to walk away. Because more often than not, investors lose the deal on the GC fee. It's the markup, not the actual project. And investors don't know that. They're like, why are we $15,000 apart? Because he's doing it for your budget and adding 15 grand to it. Hmm. Got some follow-up questions. <laughs> I'm sure, brother. I'm sure. <laughs> Let's, before I actually get into what you just talked about, which is incredible stuff. I mean, I already want to go. I don't even rehab anymore because I hate it. And I still want to go to your boot camp just to check sure. it out. No in, <laughs> in our town, I'm just taking my town, for instance. It's a pretty small town. All sure. right. I mean, 1.1 million metro, it's not tiny. It's like top 50, you know, largest metro in, in the nation. So it's not tiny, but everybody kind of knows everybody. And I know all the terrible contractors and all the ones that aren't terrible are already, they're already busy. So before, not all of them, but I, I, that's what I think in my mind. And that's what, that's what rehabbers think in their mind. Before I get to all this stuff, Ryan, how do I, you, you said three need to walk the property with you. I can't even think of three that I would even want to walk the property with. Mm -hmm. How do I even find a contractor to begin with? So first off, you're not hiring an A-plus contractor because A-plus contractors do not rehab because they actually do work in the retail world. In the retail world, okay. they can mark everything up 30% plus. In the construction, rehab, construction world, everything is always half. So if you ever want to build a new custom home, but it's on a rehab budget, you take the cost, uh, the average cost in your zip code to build and you cut it in half. So if it's $200 square foot new, it's 100 square feet rehab. So everything is half. So if it's 30% retail markup, then it's 15% rehab markup. It's based mm -hmm. on your, your zip codes. Consider that. Two, like I said, you're not hiring an A, you're hiring a C. The A plus mm -hmm. contractors have working capital. They have established credit lines with vendors. They have also a lot of vendor relationships, city relationships, and all those things, which are key and paramount to their success and the success of their projects. You're not getting that. You're getting the B, C, hopefully a B, not even a B. You're getting a C contract. The C contract, like I said earlier, they can't financial manage, they can't self-manage. They don't really have good relationships with themselves. They have high turnover as well. And the truth is they're not sophisticated. They don't have CRM systems. They don't communicate well. Um, they choose not to use technology because there's a big, there's a big problem in the industry. 50% of all labor in the industry of construction is missing anyway because trade schools were taken away for 20 years. Mm. So now that's changing. Now everybody's, you see it all over social media, people are starting to break bad trade schools. I'm kind of one of them. But now it's starting to transition where like generation, uh, I think X is now saying like, or whatever it is like, okay, I, I'd rather go learn to be an electrician than go to college, yeah. whatever. But my point is that plays a big role in what you're hiring. So let's combine all these problems as to why you hate contractors, why you can't find a good contractor. If you only can afford a C, that's because your margin only allows you to afford what you can afford. And in this world, you pay for what you get, good and bad. So you start off there. You're, the only way a big company can attract an A-plus contractor is with volume. If you're a turnkey operation out there, and I told all my turnkey clients, if you're turnkey doing 100 plus flips a year, uh, whether they be rentals or not, I don't really, it doesn't matter to me. Right. Now you're attractive to an A-plus contractor who says, okay, I'm not going to be able to make my margin every property, but I can make my margin over 30 properties. Then I multiply that by 60, 90. Okay. I can, I, I got to do volume alongside you. It's mind blowing how many investors and contractors don't see that their, their relationship is parallel. Investors want financial freedom. That means you're not hitting home runs, dude. You're hitting base hits. Yeah. You can do volume. You have to do volume. As long as you're in the business, you've got to do volume. Well, contractors have to do volume too then with you. So if you paint that picture as a business, and if you control the numbers on the material side and the markup side, and you're only hiring laborers, you're going to get better output from those laborers, even though they're a C-level contractor, because you're paying them for one thing, to show up and install. That's it. That's it. And that's why it's a lot easier to control a C-level contractor, because they need you just as much as you need them. I think 
just bringing this point to the forefront of the conversation is vital because I don't, I think this is that just that point is missing at least in the circles I run into that everybody wants an A contractor. Everybody wants even a B contractor where I'm from and we'd be happy with a B, but just to understand up front that you're going to, you're, the pool you're playing in is going to be the C contractor pool, maybe even the D God forbid, but, sure. but, but where I think the point that you're trying to make is if it, with, with everything else that we discussed prior is if you can figure out, if you can be the kind of investor, house flipper, um, the rehabber, if you can be the guy who, or gal who understands how to manage this C or maybe even possibly D player and understand how to, how to control it, how everything that you're talking about with, with your points that I want to get back to, by the way, sure. then I feel like that is the game changing mindset shift yes. that most of us don't really even know exists. Would, we want the A guy. I would agree 100% with that. Having open dialogue from day one is important. That's why when I was talking about the four steps of production, during that process of negotiating with me, you're getting to know me. We're establishing a rapport. We're establishing what? Dialogue, open communication. And trust. It starts way in the beginning, man. I agree with you. The so, very forefront. So let's get back to the four steps because I still have some more follow-up to some other stuff. But let's get back to these four steps. You got the production phase. Are these four phases you're going to give me? These are four steps. Four steps phase in the first one. phase. Okay. That's the first phase, yeah. Phase this one is the production, production phase. phase. Yes. So step one is week one. Because you can break it down. Some people will put a property under contract. They give them 30 days, 45 days to close. So you could actually keep your steps by week, like week one, week two, week three, if you're smart, but some people don't. So, and some people can get things done faster than others. It just depends on your relationships. So I just call it step one, step two, step four, or step three, step four. So step one, obviously walk the property, preliminary scope, not a final scope. You're trying to put that together verbally with your contractor. You tell them when to start, you tell them what the awarded budget's going to be, and you tell them the time frame. Once you get those yeses and agreements, then you're ready for step two, which is contract period. Now you can actually put that information in a contract. You can't write a contract without those three key things, clearly. So why wait for me to give you a bid, right? Think about how profound this is. And there's gonna be a bunch of people listening to this right now going, damn, that's me right now. You ask me, Ryan, hey, send me a bid. Sure, let me get, uh, give, me, give me till Friday. Okay, cool. You're sitting there going, I don't know why it takes that long, but cause, cause I'm busy, right? And I can push you off because I've got other jobs. And remember, I'm in the business too, so I'm weighing out other contracts, which one's more lucrative for me. Maybe yours isn't as lucrative. So I'm saying what's out there. Some, some contracts might fall through. Now you're back in line, right? You always have batters in the batter's box. So the reality is I, I might take two weeks to get you a bid, and I'm 15 grand off where you want to go. But you like me, so you're like, all right, let me call this guy and see where we're at, where are we missing, what do we got to do to make it work. Another week goes by before I can respond to you. And then a couple of days later, now we're in the fourth week. You just lost a month trying to chase me for, to, to make numbers work. And what if we can't make numbers work? You just wasted a month of your life. This is the whole idea of you taking control as the investor. You are the project manager. Take control of it from day one. Don't wait for me. Tell me what it is, okay? So that goes into why I'm saying this. So step two is now the contract period. You're putting that data into the contract. Your contract should have a number of things in them. And again, I'm not an attorney, so I can't give you legal advice, but I can tell you what's in my contracts. I have the contract. I have scope of work. I have a blank sub list for the contractor to fill out. Who are my subs on your job, right? I have a blank addendum pages for any negotiations and changes we make during the production phase. I have a blank ske uh, a schedule so that the contractor fills out the schedule for me, not the other way around. I, if I'm an investor who's not that savvy, how am I going to tell this guy how to get things done? I don't know that. So at the end of the day, I say, you fill all of this out. All those things, and then obviously a skew list and a material selection, even though you're buying finishes, let the contractor have an idea of what he's installing. Here's the reason why. I may agree to your number during step one, but you didn't tell me we're, we're installing Chinese floating vanities because their plumbing doesn't match American plumbing. I need to know that. That's a legit issue. That's why dialogue, like you said, in the forefront is very important. So I want to see the materials you're ordering just in case I got to make an adjustment. Say, hey, you know, browse, we can do this. I didn't realize you're doing this, this, and this. That's a different, I got to have my plumber do a little bit different work. Or my electrician's got to do a little bit different work to pass code. Okay, cool. Didn't know that. That becomes part of your, your addendum now. And just so people don't, you know, for those who don't realize, every first change order should happen before demo day one. 
because that means you're actually thinking and going through the process of changing what the outcome is going to be before the project starts. Demo is when like change order two usually happens. It's not the other way around. People are like, oh, it's my first change order. No, actually, you guys could have talked about this three weeks mm -hmm. ago, but you didn't know. So my point is, that's what contracts are all about. Have them initial every single page of the documents, even if it's even even the signature uh, signature page is obvious. Once you get that back, hopefully it's within 48 hours. Press the guy. You need this back. You need this back because you need to complete step two to get to step three. Step three is pre-con, pre-construction meeting, all hands on deck, back at the property. Because now you've got uh, a signed contract from me. I filled out the schedule. I filled out my sub list. What you're going to then do is you're going to create what's called a job site binder, which goes back to what I was saying when we first started. Every job site you go to, there's always documents there. Nobody in the rehab world ever put together a job site binder for me except me. And now I teach every investor I know, job site binder saves your life. It's efficiencies. So you create the job site binder with all the documents I signed. Put it in there. A couple things you're going to add to that job site binder. Because remember, you're going to drop that binder off at pre-con meeting. You're going to leave it on the property. Add in the blank lien waivers. So in the contract, it says Ryan's getting six draws. That means I should have five partials, one final. Put those in there so that it's easy for me to access. No excuses as to why I can't get it to you. You want to check on Friday? Go on the binder. Get that thing notarized. Leave it there. I'll pick it up myself. Or I'll, I'll come get it on Monday. But make sure it's in the binder. Send me a picture. Blah, 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 blah. So the job site binder has all those documents in it. The job site binder is also very, very good. So when you get your cabinets laid out, any new drawings laid out, any new pictures from vendors laid out, you stick it in the job site binder so that they can access it immediately. It minimizes a thousand phone calls to you. It minimizes a million miscommunications to you. And it minimizes surprises. It also makes you much more efficient in phase two, which is project management. Okay, so you're at pre-con, you drop the binder, you tell your GC, this binder's for you and me, it does not leave the property. I'm the first to drop it off and I'm the last to pick it up. I want this thing to be falling apart like shit everywhere. That means it's being used. And there's other technical things, but not, not, we don't have time for that. But there's other technical things in the, in the binder that makes your life easy on project management. All hands on deck meeting is you, partners, investors, Contractors, foremen, project managers, the real estate agents, architects, designers, whoever's involved with that specific project should be at that meeting as a speak now, forever, hold your peace meeting. Because now, after that meeting, any change orders will happen, any agreements happen, then and there on the spot, any changes happen, then and there on the spot. Now you're done. Now you have week four, step four. That's the money week. That's where a savvy investor should go over their money, go back over their funding. If it's a hard money loan, go over the loan terms. If it's also contractual, make sure that the loan terms matches the schedule that GC provided. If not, this is where you have open dialogue again. Meet with your GC and say, hey, we got to match these things. The lender wants to lend this way, and I want to make sure that you're not slowed down by this. How do we make and modify our schedule to accommodate this or vice versa? It's an open conversation with your GC. So he knows when the milestones are, when the payments are coming, about how much he may or may not be getting. After that, you're ready for demo day one, my man. Ryan, <laughs> let's, let's talk real world here. Okay. Nobody I know has anything that you're talking about with this big old binder full of, full of all this stuff. My students do. Nobody I know. I've never even heard of this stuff. And <laughs> not only that, have I not only heard of it, not only not heard of it, but who's going to do all this? You. And if you're in a company with employees, you have a construction coordinator who does it. Is this, Ryan, is this the difference between a professional rehabber and someone who's just trying to do one-offs here and there to try to make a little extra money? 100%, but it's also 100% doable for any novice. It's just a matter of practice. That's it. But it's too much work. No, it's not. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's step-by-step. I have a manual. It's actually here, actually, because I have to redo it. It's got tabs, man. It tells you step by step, checkbox by checkbox. You can't advance unless you've marked as you go. It's called the Rehab Project Management Manual on the job site. Every house should have one. You can't miss. It's there. You I've only miss if you don't do your job. I've never seen a house with one of those. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to change your market, brother. The next real world question I have for you, Ryan, is... Yeah. You said in the beginning that it's your flip. You're the investor. It's your flip. You have to be there. 
Yes. You have involved. to be a part of it. Involved. At involved. Some level, yes. Involved. Yes. yes. Most of the guys I'm, I'm in circles with, they want the opposite. They don't want to be involved. They want the contractor handle, to handle everything. Is this why they're getting ripped off? 100%. Is this why they can't find a good, reliable, decent contractor? Why they're 100%. all scamming them? 100%. We should have emojis going up. 100, 100, 100. Keep going. No, but it's, it's really interesting you're bringing all this stuff up because everyone I talk to, rehabs that I've done, I don't rehab anymore because I hate it because I hate this whole song and dance awesome. that you're doing. I just, I just don't, even, I don't even enjoy it at all. So I, just, I, I stopped doing it. So, and, and I know a lot of people like that or they put up with it or they and just- I, I like, I've, I'm so proud and happy that you admitted that because that's part of why we did what we did. I want to attract rehabbers to take the advantage of coming back to it. Yeah. I want to attract the wholesalers the option to say, you know what, maybe it's not so hard if I have a real system and a real process. And that's what it is. It's not just helping the ones that are doing it. It's attracting those who did it and hate it who may not say, well, I might come back in on a small level and try this thing out. That's all it is, right? Think of us. Think of the Rehab Depot as uh, CEs to a real estate broker keeping his license. Every year they got to take a class here, a couple hours there. That's all we are to the rehab world. There's, we're a place that project managers can continue learning. It's a place where investors continue learning. That's all it is. Yeah. I don't want to, um, well, I want to ask you a couple of quick hitters. And, oh. and I understand that these are probably, in, in lieu of, of the conversation that we've just had, these are probably not great questions. <laughs> and, and I oh. get that. Okay. But, there, but there are going to be some people out there that are like, Brian or Ryan, I, I hear everything that you're saying and it's cool. It's real world for me. I can't do it like that. I'd like to, but I just don't have the time. But, and they're going to want me to ask these questions. But in the sure. context of our conversation, these are not good questions and I recognize that. But they are going to want, want me to ask, do you do a background check on your, on your contractor ahead of time? No, they're 1099. I can Google them. I'll check out the Better Business Bureau, things like that, but they're 1099 contractors. I'm not, I'm not putting money into a contract. Do you give your contractor money first up front before anything's been done? Not if I don't know you. If I know you, I'll give you some money up front. Here's how I do that. If I don't know you, we negotiate the upfront terms. Okay, so putting a dumpster on, on uh, a job site, that's me. I'll buy the dumpster. Don't worry about that. Right? I can write that off. Now, the other thing is you're, you're carrying labor for a week. I'll make sure you get paid the first week, but I'm not giving you upfront money on labor. You can show up and do your job. Right? We're working as a team. You get, I have a material list that's in the job site binder. We said I told you it was more technical. There's a material list that says item, due date, quantity, square footage, linear footage, all that stuff. They fill that out every single Monday and upload that into our CRM system, and we order. So it's, it's very much in tandem. That's my point. There's a lot more technical to running these things, but it's not as difficult as you think it is. But that's my point is it, it, it goes down to a little level of participation. And then once you practice it once or twice, it's second nature. Yeah. It's incredible stuff, Ryan. I, I, think, I think the people that are listening to this are at least the ones that, who are rehabbing or want to rehab. Um, it's highly recommended by myself that you take your job seriously. If you want to be an investor and you want to be a rehabber in particular, don't just say, hey, Mr. Contractor, come in, give me a bid. Okay, here, I agree to your terms. Now go do it. Call me when it's done. It's, it's what I've done in the past, what a lot of people I know have done in the past. And I think just based on what I hear you talking about, and I've been following you for a long time as well, this is the difference between, you know, going, you know, listening to someone like Ryan. It's the difference between doing your job as a professional and putting some work, putting some real work into it, and just being a fly by the night guy that's probably gonna get crushed by the next downturn. I couldn't agree more. Like I always tell everybody, if this is a hobby for you, I'm gonna crush you. Guys like me will crush you. Yeah. You have to make this a lifestyle and a business. This is a business. Treat it as such. Ryan, tell everybody when your next boot camp is. When, like, when do you do these things? What do I get if I come to your boot camp? And, and if you don't mind, I'd love to even know the price. I want to know everything. Tell me about it. Got it. So our, our next and last boot camp of the year is here in Chicago. It's November 7th through the 9th. Okay. The ticket is the $1,500 a seat. It's two and a half days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday is eight to five, Friday, eight to five, and Saturday, 12 to, uh, I'm sorry, eight to 12, half day. We do that so that people flying in from all the country can enjoy Chicago. Um, what you're gonna get, oh man. So we're gonna teach you all three phases of construction. I'm gonna teach you time management, 
I'm going to teach you how to estimate and finance money. I'm going to teach you how to manage contractors because you manage the GC. You don't manage the job. You're hiring somebody to manage the job, which is the GC. I'm going to teach you general contracting so you understand what you're hiring. And obviously, the golden goose is project management. We're going to go through the whole course of project management uh, that covers risk analysis, covers cost analysis, covers Gantt charts. It covers every single thing you need to know. You, that's what it was. You need to be the A. That's what it is. If you're not the A, nobody else is going to do it for you. Yeah. And that's what I mean by just a little bit of level. I'm not saying be the expert in it because that will come with more and more flips, right? So my point is you're going to learn everything about general contracting and project management. And we're the only company in the world that does this. And it's going to be me facilitating it the whole time. No speakers, no panels, no bullshit buffering. It's three days of nonstop education. It's, it's a lot. And we give you the, manage, uh, the manuals, the booklets, and the guides. You get access to my personal Google Drive and all my templates. And you get access to our online, basically, uh, basically the whole academy, all, all 50 classes, the whole nine. So this is our last one of the year, man. We want to finish strong. It's been a hell of a year. We just finished one a week and a half ago. And this is the one, man. I would come to this one. It's going to be, we've already have, damn, we got 15 commitments. And I just started marketing it when, when I was in Florida, I don't know, two days ago. No. So we're, we're, we're going to start marketing it literally this week and that'll sell out real quick. Well, what's the sellout number? We need to know this. Uh, I don't tell the sellout oh, Okay. All right. I don't where, tell the where, number because it actually, I go back and forth with the venue. I'm like, can we fit this many more? I'm like, hey, <laughs> can we fit this many more? Because we actually have it at Maggiano's Banquet Hall. It's big. We have, we have high end lunches and breakfast. It's very, very nice. We have a champagne toast on the last day. We I saw that. We do way, dude. We have a good time when we do this because I know they're long days. Yeah. But everything I give you is so that you can apply it right now. You're calling your project managers at home while you're there. You're calling your partner at home while you're here. You're like, dude, we're totally doing it wrong. And that's what I want to hear. Honest, transparent communication. What's the website? Where can they go sign up? TheRehabDepot.com. www.TheRehabDepot.com. You'll see the link on the far right on top of the menu. You can catch me at uh, on IG, at a Legendary Flipper on Facebook. Rehab Depot, or Brian Roddy Garcilazo. I'm everywhere, man. YouTube, the Rehab Depot. I do a lot of videos. It has, I have fun with this. It's awesome. This has been one of the best shows, especially education wise. Like, this is a topic we haven't talked about. And it's a topic I think very few people can talk about intelligently. So I can't thank you enough, Brian, for coming on the show. It could be daunting. Hey, man, thank you. And thank you, all the listeners. Whatever you guys need, there's actually finally somebody here for you therehabdepot.com. We're going to put that in the show notes, guys. I highly recommend, I, I don't even know if I've ever said this. I highly recommend that you get out there November 7th through 9th. That is tough in the South because November 9th is a very special day. Alabama versus LSU might be number oh. one versus number two. I have an idea for those fans. I have a lot of relationships up here. I could always put a nice TV in the room. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. Can, it'll be a, t- it'll be a 2.30 start there on that Saturday. Well, Ryan, thank you so much. Can't thank you enough for coming on the show, giving, us, giving our audience an incredible, incredible amount of information. The Rehab Depot, if you can't make it November 7th through 9th, make sure you're following Ryan so you know when his next one is coming up um, at the beginning of next year. We love you guys so much. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time.